All right, good morning, boys and squirrels. Ben, I'm here back with another video. This time, what I'm doing is I'm ranking all the strength uh, tree skills from best to worst. In my opinion, I got to stress that. This is my opinion. So what I think is best all the way to worst. Now, I do encourage the comments. Uh, I will say, like, it helps you learn, you know? I may think a skill is shit, but the reason I think it's shit is because I don't fully understand it. I will say I did a perception tree from best to worst yesterday. And the skill penetrator, which I'll link that this way. I'll link that over here somewhere just so you can see it if you want to go back and watch that one. But the penetrator skill, when you get it to level 5, it says does a thousand damage through blocks. In my head, when I used to read that, that always to me meant it can do a thousand damage to a block. And now, like looking at it, and when I was editing a video yesterday, it kind of made me realize I'm pretty sure that's meaning you can go through a block less than a thousand damage worth to hit a zombie which makes that a little more useful sure like as the game progresses and things go on yeah no not really but it's nice to kind of understand that skill a little bit better but that being said we're ranking the nine strength skills from first to last essentially what i'm going to do first is i'm going to throw them up on the tier list i'm going to talk about them why i feel the way i do and then toward the end of the video what i'm going to do is literally once we have them all up on the screen in the tier list. So if you're wanting to go hard into strength, this may help with what skills you're wanting to look to, to level up first. So go ahead and like and subscribe, and we will get right into this. All right. So I always like to preface this by stating this is on the premise that we've maxed out strength. So we got 10 out of 10 strength, and now we're looking to just max these out. And I'll always say that first just because this unlocks them all. So you can take them 1 to 5 or 1 to 3 or 1 to 4. So the first skill is Boomstick. It specializes with shotguns and sends your enemies to meet their maker. Do more damage. Blow off limbs or blow limbs off. Uh, shoot and reload faster. And then once you get it to tier 5, it says you've ascended to legendary status of Shotgun Messiah. As you are the last thing they see before meeting their maker, shotguns deal 50% more damage, 50% faster fire rate, and 30% faster reload. And then leg shots also cripple. Boomstick in general, shotguns in general, are playstyle based. If you're one of those people who like to be like down and dirty and close up with the zombies, like shotguns is the way to go. It'd be S tier every time, you know. That's your playstyle. You like to be close, you like to try to blow their heads off and blow them up. But if you're one of those people who like more safer kind of player to where you do not want to be right on top of the zombies, then you look at shotguns as one of those uh, guns or weapons that you want to avoid at all cost. So what we'll do is kind of like how we did with a perception is we'll show you how it looks. We'll throw in uh, 25 zombie Arlenes and see how they do, how the shotgun does itself. So let's pop in here. So we have our regular ammo. You got to remember this is without... Uh, any kind of guys there you go any kind of mods to the weapon or anything along those lines so as you can see we're just mowing them down for the most part this little killing corridor which I showed it yesterday in perception but this is something you can easily make this is something I made very fast kind of shitly thrown together but I'll show you how it looks real quick just to give you a better idea is say on horde night zombies will come you know and they're gonna run in here and they're going to get all bunched up all together and for something like the shotgun this is as good as it gets you know like you have them all bunched up you're hitting multiple zombies at once and knocking out multiple zombies so this is a really kind of good base design for that concept we'll look at the book itself which is right here and look at these skills Shotguns do 10% more damage. That's nice. Uh, craft breaching ammo. That's what I'm going to show you in a minute. Targets with three mean, within three meters have a higher chance to dismember. That's always great. Uh, craft shotgun slugs. Degrade 20% slower. Tube extender mods, which comes in handy for the pump shotgun and the auto shotgun. It essentially lets them hold more ammo. And then targets with full health take 20% more damage. Very good. And then you can one-shot most wood blocks. This, to me can be very nice but at the same time can be just the biggest pain in the ass to where you're blowing the hell out of walls maybe when you're clearing a quest or whatever and accidentally blowing up uh loot and everything else just because of how strong this becomes two walls 
So let's look at this real quick of how strong the ammo does to a wall. This is concrete already, so it's fully healed. We shoot it just straight up, and it does about 140. So let's heal it and use the ammo that's designed to do this. So this is the whole purpose pretty much behind the breaching ammo, is to shoot doors, safes, kind of, that kind of thing. Um, and that does about 220. So 140 to 220. In my opinion, that's it's nice, but like, especially if you're perking into strength and things like that, you have this to where it almost takes 500 max, you know? So it's just like, why are you going to use your shotgun? There's really no purpose uh, for using the breaching rounds or to break anything or any of the walls. Now, as I said, this is a close-up uh, weapon, but it has a third type of ammo called the shotgun, shotgun AP slug. That gives you a ton of range. So now we can get striking distance, way far distance. Sneak bonus. See how far we hit it? Again, it didn't kill it, but instead of being on top of, say, the tree, you know, we can hit it from here and knock down the damn tree. So that just shows you. That's a more mid to late game tier uh, ammo. But if you're specking into shotguns hardcore, like, this is a great way to go, is the, this ammo, is to work toward this ammo, because you can stand back here, so you're out of the range of being hit from the zombies and still do a ton of damage. Uh, you could rank shotguns anywhere from a to b i feel like i would say for now i'm gonna put it at the top of b b tier it's just to do the damage you want to do you're always going to have to kind of be up on top of them unless you're kind of late game and you have the ap uh ammo but it's just one of those ammo uh one of those guns that it doesn't really become that great until the end because you gotta think you start out with a pipe shotgun and for fuck's sake i hate that damn thing more than anything that's the shittiest pipe weapon known to man even the pipe rifle it just seems like it's 10 times better than that damn pipe shotgun and then you can eventually get a double barrel which again it just two shotgun cells itself you know so it slowly gets better but it's not until late game to where you can get your self a pump shotgun or the automatic shotgun that you really start to reap the benefits of those rewards all right next is poem pete so you specialize in knocking your foes senseless with the clubs and bats and then with five points into it poem pete once took on 50 zombies with just a club and he would be proud of you clubs deal 50 percent more damage attacks do 200 percent more damage to sun enemies and power attacks have a hundred percent chance to knock foes back Killing blows grant 30% or 30 stamina. Three successful hits in a short time cause the last blow to do 100% extra damage. Find more clubs and parts and loot. So clubs used to be everybody's go-to just because of how overpowered they were in the old alphas. Now you kind of see everything's kind of caught up or even past the clubs. Clubs are still a great weapon, but now that everything gets that 30 stamina per kill, you know, like, everything can be power attacked, you know? But let's look at the books. Batter up. They do get their own books, which is very useful. So do 10% more damage to clubs. Always nice. Sprinting with a club drawn in combat uses 20% less stamina. It can be... It's one of those niche things, but that can be very helpful. Power attacks to leg slow enemy. That's nice. Especially when clearing a building. And then power attacks increase chance of knockdown. Nice. Bats and clubs degrade 20% slower. Ragdoll enemies and craft chain modifications for bats and clubs. And then power attacks that kill your enemy refill your stamina meter. So the one thing about clubs as well as sledges is unlike the steel spear that shoots straight forward, you know, is the clubs and every other weapon is going to come from an angle. So if you do a base like the killing corridor, like we had here, to where it was just one strip straight forward, you're really not going to maximize... The the potential of the club or the sledgehammer so what we did for here is we broke this out to make it a little bit bigger because you got to understand if we're uh this is all blocked you know when we're swinging everything is just going to get bunched and what i've seen in the past is once they get bunched and you hit they they fall on top of each other they block the way you're really not getting to showcase the damage that the club or the sledge can do so let's look at it right here let's go ahead and pull in 25 zombies and see how the club... Holy shit, Pickle! 
This isn't good. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, now let's see how this does. So as you can see, they're a little bit more spaced out. So when, like, you can see that one kind of, like, uh, ragdolled in the front. If you do this with just one single, like, corridor for them to run in, she's going to ragdoll right in front of all of them, and you're not going to be able to hit them. So it's going to make it a little bit harder. But there they are. So let's go ahead and pull up our tier list. All right, so Pummel Pete, as you can see, like, very dependent on the base, which, I mean, all melee weapons are. But as long as you got it a little open up, like, two wide, three wide, you can, it kind of showcases the damage. I will say I won't put it S because I just don't feel like... You could see by the video yesterday with the spears how quick we were killing those zombies. The spear now has so many perks that top the clubs. They got bleed damage that book that lets you penetrate numerous or multiple zombies like that is so big you're knocking out multiple zombies at once compared to the club that's like bonking some zombies every now and then but it bonks them down and ragdolls them into the way so it makes it slower kills but still such a good weapon due to the fact of all the mods you can put on it this is without any mods whatsoever so you look at it and you can get five six mods you know on this weapon to make it very very formidable all right for sledges specialize in destroying enemies and structures with sledgehammers so once you get five points into this it looks like this if anyone pisses you off you have the means to crush their skulls sledgehammers deal 50 percent more damage power attacks have a 75 percent chance to knock down enemies and a 50 percent chance to knock down nearby foes killing blows grant 30 stamina find more sledge and parts and loot so the sledge really doesn't have any kind of specialized book, kind of like the clubs as well as spears do. But then again, you don't really need that with the sledgehammers. If they had their own specialized books, this thing would be so damn overpowered. Because when you look at the sledge itself, it's dealing melee damage at 82 with just regular hits and 150 with power attacks. So let's look at the club. It's doing double what the club is, essentially. In even the spear, it's doing double what the club is. Now, the big thing with this is it's using twice the amount of stamina. But, no, it's not getting its full stamina back like the others because of the books, but it's getting 30 stamina back per kill. So you're able to really kind of utilize it a lot more than what you used to be able to in the past, you know, with these power attacks. So let's bring in our 25 Arlenes and pop down here and see how we do. As you can see, we're knocking down so many zombies. The bad thing is it's ragdolling them in front. Like, you're knocking down so many that they're popping forward, which can be an issue. But, yeah, see, they're they're so damn confused. They don't know what the hell they're doing. This taint. Oh, man. They're breaking. They're breaking. But we can knock them all down. And, yes, this is way more stamina than what you'd usually have. Um, but, this kind of showcases what you, like, an in-game potential would look like, you know. But as you can tell, like, not very many of them dying. More of them just being knocked down, you know. And are these ones dead? No, they're going to slowly all pop back up. So you're having to utilize a lot of hits. So right off the bat, now, while the sledge isn't, like, that bad of a weapon, let's, uh, heal real quick, just get rid of that. The sledge isn't a bad of weapon. The stamina usage is going to be huge until you get those five points in to where you're not really going to be able to maintain that on a Horde Knight basis, you know. That being said, I could see it ranked behind the clubs. I could see it ranked even ahead of the clubs. It's how you perceive it, honestly. I'm going to put it behind the shotguns. I still feel like in Strength Tree, the clubs are kind of superior. You're able to keep bonging. You do the same thing you do with the sledgehammers. The clubs also knock them down, you know? But you're able to just keep swinging and swinging and swinging because of that book that gives you all stamina regen back after a kill. Compared to the sledge, it's like if you don't kill them and you keep knocking them down like we were, 
uh, you run out of stamina very fast, and then it becomes an issue. But still a great weapon. All right, next, big and fast. We'll hit this kind of quick. You're not just strong, but you're fast as well. Increase club and stamina, uh, sledgehammer speeds. Let your enemies take a ride on the heavy metal. Clubs and sledgehammers are 25% faster. This is something you definitely want. But you got to pretty much max either uh, Pummel Pete or Skull Crusher first. You want to utilize the club or the sledges first before you go into this. But this becomes extremely helpful once you have one of these maxed. So we'll put this in B tier right here. I, I can't justify putting it in front of any of these because without sledges or obviously uh, clubs, like it would be F tier. There'd be no purpose to it whatsoever. But with them, it makes the weapon so much better. So that's where we'll slide that to. All right, next talent. Now we've switched from combat perks to general strength uh, perks. So heavy armor. Specializing in shielding yourself with iron and steel, becoming an unstoppable behemoth on the battlefield. So once you get four points into it, it says you are now a walking tank. Reduce heavy armor and movement and stamina penalty by 25%. And improve durability by 200%. This is actually kind of big. If you're specializing in heavy armor, say like the steel or even the iron right off the bat, you know, that kind of armor, this helps out quite a bit. You maybe never really notice the stamina penalty you get by heavy armor, but running around like drains your stamina so much faster when you're all decked out. But having that less 25% uh, armor is nice. It, it helps out quite a bit. It's still not insanely useful, you know, because it's only 25%. It's not like it's getting rid of the penalty altogether, but it's very helpful. The durability is kind of like an eh. It just means you're not going to have to repair it so much. I'd put it in C. I did hype it up. I want you to know there's a purpose to it. It's not an F tier. Like, having the stamina usage like moving around go down 25% is very nice but it's not like holy shit you know it it's just mid tier it's very mid all right next pack mule your pack mule can carry more items in your inventory without suffering movement penalties so when you get to 5 now you're just showing off you're either part mule or a strong man carry four or more items without being encumbered so this goes up every time, you know, carry four additional items, three additional items, three additional items, three, four, four. I'll say this one, like, and most people should know this, this is uh, very useless. Right off the bat, sure, it's helpful to where it unlocks everything, but you, you don't want to put your points into this. Almost every piece of clothing you wear can get a uh, clothing double pocket mod, the two, like, your clothes you actually wear and then your armor can have the triple uh pocket mod to where once you get all these like your inventory is all the way open to where this is like useless beyond useless pack meal falls into f tier if you were to use it right off the bat to help you kind of get through the game there there's a small bit of use but you're just wasting points at that point like sure I guess you could justify putting points into the beginning and then eventually getting a forgetting elixir, but it's just it's again it's a waste of points. It's a waste of money, especially once you can get those uh, double pocket storage mods as well as the triple pocket storage mods and be just fine. And you can utilize nowadays like storage boxes and things like that before you go into a building, as you've seen other YouTubers, to where you don't have to carry your full load on you, you know. Master Chef. Learn to become a Master Chef. Decrease cooking times and ingredients needed for your favorite recipes. Three, cooking for an army? Use 40% less of the recipe's main ingredients and cook 80% faster. This one's used to be very helpful. Before Alpha 21, like putting perks into it or putting points into it is how you unlocked the uh, actual recipes themselves. Now you learn the books. And from there is how you learn all your different recipes so essentially all you're getting from maxing this out is using a little bit less recipes not even half the recipes you're still using half you're using about 40 as it says 40 percent less of the main ingredients and cooking it 80 percent faster uh kind of a niche thing there's no real 
purpose for maxing this out, you know, like the 80% faster is kind of nice, but at the same time, like if you're really that pressed for time, you could throw down a couple campfires really to get it, the process moving faster, but it's just, it's not necessary. You're never going to be like, yes, right off the bat, water and food are going to be hum hard to come by, but not that hard. You will be absolutely fine to where this again, I would rank as F tier. It, it's got a purpose to where you can cook food faster and use a little bit less ingredients. So it's way more useful than pack meal. But then again, uh, don't don't waste your points. All right, next, Miner 69er. Maximize your mining efforts by increasing tool damage to bring down rocks and trees faster. And then once you get five points into it, you're a legendary Miner 69er and can find the juicy center of any rock faster than a horny bullfrog. Increase damage by 50% and block damage by 150% with any axe, pick, shovel, chainsaw, or auger. Find more tools and parts and loot. Now what I'm going to do is now I'm going to read Mother Load. These two go hand in hand being construction perks. Alright, so harvest more resources and bring home the Mother Load. Get five points. Mining is second nature to you and you find the mother load everywhere you go. Harvest 100% more ore, stone, terrain, blocks, and trees with any axe, pick, shovel, or chainsaw, or auger. So like I said, these two go hand in hand. They're very nice perks. Very good to have. Especially if you plan on playing a long game and you plan on building some kind of intricate ass base that's very big or you're going to use a lot of resources to upkeep, you know, and you want to keep maximizing that. These are 100% helpful. If I had to pick one before the other, especially starting out, I would probably go Miner 69er just because of the stamina cost reduction. That's huge. That's going to make your process go a lot faster as well as doing a little bit more block damage. So you're going to be knocking out those out faster and then go into mother load. So then you're getting more resources. Resources are beyond helpful. But when it comes to reducing stamina costs by 25 and 50% for power attacks is very big in the grand scheme of getting more resources. So your Miner 69er, I'd actually throw both up into A tier. And you could justify even S tier, you know. Because if you're doing a long playthrough, these are essential to where like, you can, you can survive without it, but they're going to make the game so much easier. And they have so many perks to do in it. Like, not only are you going to get a whole bunch of resources, you're going to get a ton of experience by getting these resources, which is going to grow your levels. Uh, you can sell some of the resources for money. Like, there's so many different niche uses to upgrading these. But that's going to wrap up our tier list. This time, no S. I, I'm being very critical when I look at this. When I look at S tier uh, skills, it's ones that I feel like if you're going to go into that tree, you can't live without that one. You need this. This is that good to where it's going to make the game so much easier or so useful to have. But we do have three A tiers, and if I ranked them in order, I'd go as such. Minor 69er, we mentioned it just a second ago. Um, great for getting resources. The stamina cost uh, of going down makes it easier to get resources. It makes it easier to break through walls and POIs. It's helpful for so many tasks, not just gathering resources itself. Next is mother load. It falls hand in hand with minor 69er. Once you get minor 69er up there and you got that stamina reduction, like you can just start pounding out resources left and right. You get 100% more resources. So instead of getting say five rocks for every hit you're going to be getting 10 or instead of getting 50 iron you're getting 100 iron so it becomes so so useful especially even early game mid late and early next pummel pete as we saw like it's kind of base dependent to an extent like you don't want some narrow walkway because the zombies are going to bunch up too bad because of that rag doll and you knocking them down to where they're going to keep falling on top of each other and everything like that but it has the books to where after every kill, you're regaining stamina. That makes this weapon so high tier to where you're knocking zombies down. As long as you got the room, you're knocking them down, you're killing them. You can just power attack until your little heart can't take it anymore, you know? And you don't have to worry about running out of stamina. The B tier is Boomstick. It's your only weapon, your range weapon in strength, sure. It could be classified depending on how you play your play style as an S tier. If you're someone who likes to bunch them up, like, that killing corridor could be perfect, you know, to where you got them bunched up 
all in front of you and you can just mow them down like no other. So it could be higher for sure. It could be A or S, but it's very dependent on your play style itself. As I've mentioned before, like starting out, that pipe shotgun sucks so much ass. So you have to wait to get the double barrel, which is still just shooting two uh, rounds. It's a lot better than the pipe shotgun, but still not, it's very mid, you know? And then you get finally to mid to late game, you start to get the pump shotgun or the automatic shotgun to where you really see this thing shine. But I think B, the beginning of B is a great spot for it and ranked fourth. Ranked fifth, the sledge is by far the strongest weapon in the game, you know? And you can put mods on it to make it even better. But at the same time, the stamina usage is unparalleled compared to anything else to where when you're using this thing, even if you got it max, you're getting 30 stamina back per kill. But it, as you saw me using it, it does a lot of knockdown damage. So you're not getting those kills as often to where it's just dropping all the zombies and you're using that stamina to where unless you got this thing maxed out and you have a high stamina yourself, like you're gonna be running out of stamina quite a bit to where you're going to have to pair it with something else to protect yourself. Next, big and fast. Um, like I mentioned, very niche, very nice. Uh, it increases the attack speed of both your melee weapons. So very nice to have, but I mean, without those, there's zero purpose to it whatsoever. So you gotta have either Pummel Pete, you know, or you gotta have a sledgehammer or a club, you know, for this to have any purpose whatsoever. Next is heavy armor. So the stamina reduction while moving is nice. The 25% maxed. It's not groundbreaking. That's why it's at C. Like, it would be so nice if it was 50, you know? You're still using quite a bit of stamina moving around in heavy armor. 25% definitely helps. It makes it somewhat useful. But at the same point, like, it's not groundbreaking. And then your 200%, like, degradation or whatever, or it's stronger armor, like, breaks down slower. Ah, that's a who cares kind of thing, you know? especially toward mid and late game like you'll be stronger and stronger to where you're not going to see your armor break down that fast anyway all right now for the bottom of the barrel we have master chef and pack meal so pack meal as i stated has zero purpose whatsoever uh save your points you will over time get triple pocket storage mods any kind of storage mods to where it's going to open up your inventory more and more until where it's completely open and then with master chef they because of the book system they've went away from you learning recipes by putting points into this which severely like hurt it you its usefulness you know now all it does is make the cooking time faster and use a little bit less ingredients so it's honestly not helpful whatsoever but that's gonna wrap up the tier list guys for strength be sure to let me know what you think do you agree? Do you think anything should be ranked higher or lower? I can see it going any either way, especially with some of the melee weapons. Um, I know people love Pummel Pete, but nowadays when you look at it compared to the Sphere, it's just it's not on par. I will be doing Fortitude next and ranking all those, so make sure to catch that video. And if you haven't caught the Perception video, you can watch that one linked below as well. But make sure to like and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.